Hello and welcome to this video which I'm going to show you how to paint these German 15mm late war first world war figures from Battlefront. These are from the Flames of War Rangers but I'll be using them for things like Chain of Command or Through the Mud and Blood. But I'm just going to show you in this video how I achieved this. The first thing to do was stick them on bases. I've based them individually, you don't have to, you can put them on multiple bases, but I'm doing it individually because I want them for chain of command, uh, which uses individual figures for casualties and the like. And then the next thing I did, these little MDF 15mm diameter bases that I use, and then I'm just adding this stuff which is uh, the filler. I use cheap stuff, you can buy polyfiller. I think it's called spackle in America, uh, but it's all the same kind of stuff. It doesn't take long to dry, but I'd leave it for at least 24 hours once you've got it on and I'm using there a small flat headed screwdriver just to make sure that uh, all the area is covered. Once that bit is done uh, I'll work on the texturing the bases so I use PVA glue uh, which is a water based glue I use this uh, undiluted and just paint it on with a brush uh, around the base making sure you miss the feet of the figures and then just dip them into sand this is silver sand it just gives a tiny little bit of a texture to it and to seal that sand in the next thing to do is to prime them i'm using here a rattle can just a gray primer you could you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i, I just kind of wanted to uh, just add a little bit of paint to the figures before we actually start painting anyway and now we move on to the bases of the figures themselves. I'm using my airbrush here to spray burnt umber over the bases as they are now. Uh, this is because I like to get the bases out of the way first of all, because it can be quite a messy job. So if you do it first, it means you don't get mess all over the figures that you've painted. So I do this and you can be very pretty quick when you do the base first. Uh, I will then just dry brush these with khaki. Uh, these, most of these paints are Vallejo, by the way. Uh, but I will put a list of them in the description anyway. Dry brushing is very simple if you haven't done it before. You just put paint on the brush and then wipe off as much as you can with an old cloth or a uh, kitchen towel or something like that. And then literally uh, brush over the top of the figure uh, and you'll see there it's just picking up some of the sand that I've already put on with the PVA. You can see when I swap it around how dark it is until you actually start to drop, uh, start to dry brush it there. And it's a very simple process, but if you haven't done it, give it a go, try it out. It's something new to learn when you're painting. Our next step is painting the tunics in German field grey, uh, World War II. There isn't an equivalent of the First World War, but this is the closest that I got from the sources I was using, which generally is Osprey books, but I've got a couple of other uniform books as well. There's loads of different shades of uh, grey. There's more than 50, in fact. Uh, so I just went with this one. It's pretty close to what it would originally have been, and I'm just liberally putting this on with a big brush. I will then go back and use dark blue grey for their trousers and their putties because they are slightly darker than the tunics. Uh, also remember when you're painting uniforms, not every uniform is actually uniform. You've got lots of different manufacturers making these things, you've got a lot of different dyes and lots of industries involved in this. There's a lot of working parts in actually getting these uniforms. So a lot of them aren't always the exact same colours. So you can go a little bit uh, not crazy, but you know, you don't have to be by the book with everything. Uh, this is what I do anyway, it just makes things look a little bit nicer uh, when you're using these figures, a little bit more lived in. Then we'll go back uh, using matte black, go over the boots of all the figures, get those done and out of the way. The Germans also, a lot of their uniform and their equipment is black. The packs that they normally would wear uh, have black straps and webbing and things but they're not wearing them in, the, in these figures because they're obviously kitted out for combat but they do have their entrenching tools and uh, bayonet straps which again are painted in black and also I'll paint their belt as well in black. Uh, they are wearing a lot of canvas equipment so this is painted in khaki this guy here in particular has got uh, a couple of bags strapped over his front for grenades uh, probably one of the uh, stormtrooper guys uh, packed full of grenades uh, and as I say at this stage in the war anyway a lot of the stuff was cheap canvas that was being produced rather than the black leather earlier in the first world war so this is just painted with khaki 
uh, all the straps and all the bags, the bed, bread bags and things that they'll be wearing. So again, it just gives a nice little contrast really to the grey of the tunics and of the trousers as well. It's a nice bright little colour there. Uh, but this, just be careful with this because some of those straps are quite small and you don't want to get uh, paint everywhere. Use a small brush like I'm doing there and just take your time. This is quite a time consuming process, especially when you're doing about 30 or 40 figures like I am here in a block. Then we'll move on to the flesh. So this is Sunny Skin Tone. This is again by Vallejo, as I said. Uh, I'm literally using a tiny brush here just to get all the hands and the faces that you can see. Uh, you know, don't forget there's, there's hands on both sides of those rifle barrels so paint both of those as well our next stage is german gray we'll be painting this onto the helmets and onto all the painted equipment like the gas mask canisters and things uh, and anything else that you think like the, the tops of uh, the stick grenades that kind of thing now some of the Germans in the First World War used camouflage paint on their helmets, but not a lot of frontline troops did. That was mainly something to do with the stormtroopers rather than the actual everyday bog standard infantry. So this is why I've just stuck with your typical German grey. I'm not sure how correct it is because the images that I had weren't particularly clear as to what the colour was but it works for me and it's a quite a nice dark grey colour that fits in with the rest of these guys uniforms and as I say so we'll paint all the the helmets and all the painted uh, other painted equipment as well that they're wearing then we move on to using chocolate brown this goes for the uh, water bottles uh, most of these guys have got a water bottle on them somewhere so this is the very simple easy stage just paint that tiny little dot on those i might paint some of the wood as well like for the entrenching tools uh, some of the guys have got um, shovels on their backs i may paint the wood with those but i'll usually uh, keep a different color for the wood but that's for the water bottles and this is the wood color that i use beige brown i'll use this on all the rifle stocks and any other wood that i see uh, this will also be used on the butts for the uh, machine guns the light machine guns and even i think there's a there's a couple of uh, submachine guns in this group as well the i think it's the bergman th mp th uh, 18 not 38 18 so that will have and then we go back once that's dry we'll finish off with gun metal uh, so there's one of the guys I'm painted with the uh, with the MP18 uh, trench broom, and I'm painting all the gun metal. Uh, this is just like some of the tiny little straps and things on the rifles themselves, the bolt action part of it, uh, the end of it where the the barrel is poking out, that kind of thing. A very simple, easy little job to do, and we're almost there at this point because our next step is to give them an Agrax Earthshade wash. This is Games Workshop's wash. It's a brown wash, really good. And my favorite wash on the market. And I know there's plenty of fans out there. I've never, never used anything as good as this for doing washes. You want to get as much as you can on the figure into the recesses uh, because it's gonna look really nice. I never bother to uh, highlight this once it's dry apart from one or two other bits which I'll show you in a second because I think it's such a good wash anyway it really brings out the creases especially 15 millimeter figures you can't really see a great deal of detail on them anyway and then we move on to tan yellow which I then highlight all of the flesh before because people are actually drawn to faces so this is why I'll try to do this so they just to try to make them pop a little bit you could if you wanted to do, do some highlighting on the rest of the uniforms and bits and pieces, but I, I never bother. Not with 15mm figures anyway. And I will then give everything a liberal spray of the Windsor & Newton Professional Artists Matte Varnish. This is the best on the market as far as I'm concerned. Been using it for years and I will use it for the rest of my life I think as long as they keep producing it. And we are definitely on the downward slope here. This is basing the last little bit of it. I use undiluted PVA once again and I will paint random blobs all over the figure's bases like this. On each one of them I put them on a towel, uh, a bit of kitchen towel like this so I can get all the basing done at once. But I work my way through with the PVA as I say just applying random blobs here and there and then sprinkle static grass over the top. You can use a static grass applicator. 
I've never bothered. Uh, I've never used one because once you blow on the grass itself, it actually stands up anyway, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. And especially not at 50 millimeter, uh, you're not making a railway diorama or anything like that. So I just sprinkle the grass on with my hand like this. This is just a mix of different colors that I like. And then taking each figure out individually, knocking off as much of the excess grass as you can. Uh, you save it all up on that towel, you can put it away again. You don't, you don't waste any. I will give them a blow with the hairdryer and then that's it, they're finished, completely done. Uh, there's about 30 odd, this is a platoon pack from Flames of War, uh, but as I say I'm going to be using these for Chain of Command or Through the Mud and Blood, which is why they're individually based. And for 15mm figures these are really nice, there's a lot of character in these sculpts uh, and there's only a couple of repeated poses uh, in the entire uh, platoon as well which is quite nice especially when you're playing with individual figures well i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, it was a real fun little project putting these together it didn't take long a couple of days a few hours work each day and they're done so thanks for watching